important to use. Uh, you know that I've encouraged that all along, that you guys grow in the gifts and talents that God has given to you. And so we're going to have a parable that Jesus taught. Uh, well, actually, he used it to teach a great lesson about uh, talents and skills that his people have uh, and how he wants them to give God glory. So use your gifts, your skills, your talents, to give God glory because he made you and he saved you. And that's a powerful motivation, a very, very powerful motivation that God loved you so much that he gave his son up on the cross for you and he made you and he saved you and he wants you to use your gifts to the best of your God-given ability to his glory. Um, so uh, we're going to talk about gifts after we watch the parable and uh, somebody had a hand up over here. Yeah. Well, that's not a gift. That, okay? If he's serious about that, which I know he isn't, but if he's serious, if he's, wait, you better let me finish. If he's serious about that, that's not a gift, that's a sin. God, God says in his word that being lazy is a sin against God. Um, so you don't want to, you don't want to grow that bad thing, okay? You want to grow the good thing. So, um, Repent of it. Say, I'm sorry, Lord, for, you know, being lazy once in a while. i got to uh, make sure that we understand that being lazy once in a while is okay. If you've been working hard and you need to rest, Jesus took time to rest. He, he went up on a mountain and he, uh, he rested, but he also went up on a mountain and he taught a sermon uh, for quite a while, too. And so we do need to rest. That's okay. That, that Being lazy once in a while, that's fine. But it sounded like we were talking about being lazy all the time. That's wrong. Why what? It's a sin if you're lazy all the time because it's not using your gift. Being lazy once in a while is okay. I think we all understand that. Let's move on to the parable, okay? Yeah. Go ahead. The laziness sin is the sin of sloth. And I actually, back to the rhythm and stuff, I created my own rhyme because of how much time I've been spent working and by myself. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and like Brandon, Matt Matason has not been lazy either, and a lot of you have not been lazy either. You've been working very hard. Uh, Matason uh, finds it hard to have time like this, and so uh, he came uh, on his day off to be with us today, and we appreciate that too. But guys, put your gifts to work. Uh, he who does not work, neither shall he eat. That's a Bible passage that reminds us not to be lazy. There are some people, and I'm not uh, judging anyone, I'm just telling you that there are some people who expect everything to be given to them. They are uh, lazy, and they have ability to work, they just don't, and they expect people to give them everything, including the government, and it's not with him as an instructor, Swag. as he uh, does some classroom work, right? Yes, over classroom. at the high school after school, right? Yep, and then Wednesday night downtown. And then Wednesday night next door. Yep. All right, so he, he worked really hard to get that uh, instructor uh, certification. He had to pass a good number of tests, and he uh, needed to get that done. But he, of course, works, uh, you pretty much work, uh, full, how many hours do you work over at Hardy? 47. 47 over at Hardy. He's got a family. So he's got a lot of stuff going on. So we really appreciate the fact that he's here today.
It ranks as one of the most significant events of my existence. And that's actually probably an understatement. Not talking about my wedding day, although that was certainly significant. Not even talking about the birth of my children, of which there have been three and soon to be four. Those are in a category all on their own. The day I'm thinking of is the day that ultimately brought me here to you at St. Mark's, call day up at Mequon from our seminary, May of 2016. Some of you know that my journey into the ministry wasn't as straightforward as they often come. But finally, after 10 years, I found myself sitting in that gymnasium, anxiously waiting to hear my name, followed by the location to which I would be called to serve God's people. If you've ever been to a call day service, you know that the tension in the room is so thick you could cut it with a knife. Of course, they read the names, the calls off in alphabetical order. So, I know I that all day, my other was in my room. And mom and I at home, mom, so, my mom and my room. So, that's why I have a hula. So, yeah. And oh, and I like watching you, mom.